those are a couple of those plants that Joe planted. I think he only planted the two up here toward the house. And then, I tell you what, he is so proud of those. They have just come up like crazy. There's two over there on, on the south side. They're starting to, there they are. They're getting ready to push some more leaves out. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna shade my hostess for me. But he's got like eight of them around there. Some of them are starting to get some pink on them, but I don't know if you can see that. Hasta. Hasta mañana. <laughs> no, hasta, not hasta. There they are. See? They're getting the pink. Getting some pink on them. Uh, I think, uh, you know, probably next year these things are just going to start really, really f spreading. And I'm going to love it because our yard's finally going to get some life in it. We'll finally have a lively yard. Oh, okay, I'm going in. Porch. I made three dishes. They're all the same color. And I left some rough edges on them somehow. And so I need to sand them. But I'm going to put faith, hope, and love on those three dishes. Because they're all uh, marbled pink with some of that white. Remember how hard that pink was? <laughs> well, that roller, I could take bits of the, I could take some of the pink and some of the white and kind of mix it to try to work it in a little and then roll it through the roller because it's a lot tougher than I am. <laughs> and But I left some rough edges that, that I want to sand down. So when I get to do those and I get to paint in the faith, hope, and love, I, I really want you to help me see how those come out because you know me and my penmanship. I may have Joe actually write the words. <laughs> I'd love to do a calligraphy. I've done calligraphy in the past, but my handwriting used to be a whole lot better. And in fact, I had great cursive handwriting when I was working as a nurse. I don't know if it's medication shakes. It. I mean, yes, we have a familiar tremor. I mean, it runs in the family that we have this tremor. But my medications, some of them can make it worse. And age has made it worse. I know my grandmother got to where her head was doing this. But and mine will if I'm really tired. My, if I get really fatigued and tired, my head like this. <laughs> or if I'm super nervous. <laughs> I probably do a little more of it than I realize because I'm used to it. I don't know how much of it you guys see. But we have to be able to laugh at some of that stuff. When you're going to live with it, you just as well learn to laugh at it and adjust to it. That's one th That's a word I love, adjust. We used to, uh, Joe used to tell the kids whenever they'd say, I can't. Well, there's some things, of course, a kid can't do. But we wouldn't ask them to do through things they can't do. <laughs> but he used to tell them, well, when they were growing up, can't died and is buried out back. So forget the word can't. And the truth of the matter is there, there, is, there are limits. I have limits. Now, I may be hindered as far as going out, getting close to those plants and really doing the kind of filming 
I'd prefer to, but with the zoom on the camera, hopefully I adjust to where I can get you as best picture as I can. Or at least as I can see through my lens, which is now, right now is kind of dirty. <laughs> so I want to do those, and those three will stay together. Wherever they go, they'll be a, they'll be a trio. Because that's faith, hope, and love. It's from chapter 13 of First Corinthians. And it's the very end of that chapter. And what's left is these, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Love is always the best thing. And, ah, that's a topic I'll get into another time. The different ways to love, including the way to love your enemy. Doesn't make him your friend. Oh, and I thought we were in love. Or we knew we loved each other when we got married. Nothing compared to what it is now. And through the years, it's grown from one stage to another stage to another stage. Because it doesn't stay the same. Love adjusts like anything else in life. And now we've got a deep, caring, companionable love. It's also romantic, but I mean, you, you, we have, the romance is still there. But it's changed from, I suppose, what people would call erotic in your younger years to now more companionable and relaxed with each other and just happy to be in each other's company. Have a hug, a kiss. And I don't want that to sound like I'm putting our love life out there, but I am. Because people wonder, how have you been married so long? Well, we've been married so long because we understood we had the right trainers for us. We really did. When it come to, came to marriage, we had the right trainers. My parents, they had a lot of problems, but I learned a lot. And Joe, he just absolutely loves my parents. And he would listen to my dad for hours if he could. He just, you know, he just wanted to soak in whatever my dad had to say. He appreciated his wisdom. So, with that, he's, well, Joe's had to adjust all his life. And I think that's one reason why he, he I mean, he, his parents divorced when he was young and they, his mother remarried and he, he had a great relationship with his stepfather. They worked together, they, you know, his stepdad took him under his wing, but then there became a loyalty issue because they got divorced and it was, uh, Joe didn't really want to play the loyalty game. But Joe had a more private, I guess, relationship with him after they got divorced than, you know, when we get the whole family together while they were still married. So he's had to adjust, but as far as marriage, the things that the the counseling that the minister that married us gave was priceless. He was a shepherd type of minister, a gentle leader, and he did a counseling, you know, marriage counseling before we got married, the pre-marriage counseling. And we had made decisions like we did not want to use the words divorce or that kind of thing. They were going to be just kicked out of our vocabulary. And 
I can't say through the years, neither one of us ever used it, but never, never in a context where it's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't remember more than once or twice. So you adjust to being committed and you adjust to treating each other well and right. And we've got a lot of a lot of training through the Bible and through Bible studies and stuff that we've been through too. So. We are Fraylands and Friends Crafts Plus. This is a plus. <laughs> Today is a plus. So do subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and share us with your friends. Ask them to come over and join us. We have some fun over here. It's not always me just sitting here yammering. Maybe I'll bring Rosie and Buster back out. But I gotta go cool off. So smile and wave at your neighbors, even if they don't see you. Because it makes you feel good. And take care of yourselves. Love yourself. You need to love yourself. You have a good night. I'm going. I'm going in, and I don't feel hot. That's the thing. But I am getting dry, so. <laughs> <laughs>